Hey everybody, just Miller Ops on College Physics. We're gonna do a lab. That sounds awesome, right? So this lab is going to be about work and energy. Primarily looking at the work energy theorem. So before we actually do the lab, before you do the lab, I should say, let us just talk about what's gonna go on here. What we got here is nice incline. We got a cart here, which rolls pretty freely. We got a little pulley here. We got some mass attached to the hanger here that's coupled to the cart. Got a coupled system, kind of like the Atwood machine a little bit. And what can we do with this? Well, we got the LabQuest system here. That's good. That's going to allow us to make some measurements. And what we want to be thinking about, again, is work and energy. So our focus is going to be on this cart here. We're going to be look at, looking at the work done on the cart and the cart's change in kinetic energy. So if I let go of this right now, what's going to happen? Well, if there's enough mass right there, this cart's going to accelerate up the incline, right? We'll have that there is some net work done on the cart, which produces what? It's change in kinetic energy, that's right. So right now, its initial kinetic energy is zero. This mass is going to drop some distance. The distance that the cart moves up the incline will be equal to the distance that this mass drops under the action of the force of tension and the force of gravity. And okay, there's some work done. So make sure that this cart's on the track really nice. And I let go. I, I stopped it just to not have a big commotion. But nonetheless, we had an initial kinetic energy zero, some final kinetic energy as the masses reached the ground. And we had some displacement that the cart underwent. We had the force of tension, the force due to gravity. We had some work being done. Net work produces the change in kinetic energy. So what we're going to do is we are going to utilize the LabQuest system here and the pulley and a photo gate system here that's all connected to measure the velocity of the cart as it gets to its highest point. Bring it out its highest point, but its greatest velocity, which is right as this reaches this little pad right here. So we're going to measure what that final velocity is and use that to calculate the change in kinetic energy that this cart underwent. We can measure the mass of the cart here. Good. One half mv final squared is going to be equal to the change in kinetic energy, again, because the initial kinetic energy was zero. And then we're going to compare that change in kinetic energy to the theoretical computation of the net work being done. So that's something we've got to work out a little bit here. But ultimately, the net work done is the work done by the net force. We can figure out what the net force is and go ahead and start uh, figuring all of this stuff out. So that's going to be what we're going to do here. The first thing that we want to do before we derive something here is going to be measure the mass of the cart and find the amount of mass, including the hanger here, that will produce equilibrium. That is. There's a certain amount of mass here that if I have it hanging here and I let go of the cart, the cart will stay there. Net force is zero, force of tension equals force due to gravity directed down the incline. That's going to be sort of our starting spot because we're going to start adding masses on from there, plus 40 grams, plus another 20, plus another 20, plus another 20, plus another 20, and looking at the behavior of the system in terms of changes in kinetic energy and the net work that is done in the system theoretically, and compare them. So that's going to be where we start. We're going to need to figure out what the angle of inclination is, which we have a nice little plumb bob here that we'll utilize. We're going to figure out the distance that this cart's going to move up the track under the action of the tension and the force due to gravity. So we've got a meter stick there. We've got some more masses here that we can add on. Got ourselves this. And what's left to have? Oh, we need an expression. We need an expression for the uh, net force acting on the cart so that we can compute the net work done on the cart. So let us get that somewhat quick. Um, yeah, let's just do this. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, well, we've got a little system here that involves some suspended mass and some cart mass. I'm going to call the cart M sub C, and I'm going to call the hanging mass M sub S. We got that they are attached via this cord here, we've got that there is a force of tension directed up the incline on which 
acts on the cart. And we've also got the force due to gravity parallel to the incline directed down, which acts on the cart as well. We've got ourselves this angle of inclination, theta sub i, and then we've got some forces acting on the suspended mass as well. There's some other ones. I'll draw those in momentarily. We've got the force due to gravity here, f sub g, and we put f sub g s and f g parallel c so we can make sure we're keeping track of the masses right. And then we've got this force of tension there. And yeah, we've got ourselves the normal force. That's good. And we've got ourselves the perpendicular component of the gravitational force. And those are going to be the only forces that we really consider here. Um, there's going to be some forces of friction internal in the wheels and the pulley. Those are fairly negligible, but there's energy associated with the rotations too. We're ignoring that, but um, we'll still get some decent results. Nonetheless, this is where we start off from. So, how are we going to figure out what the net force acting on the cart is? Well, we just start. Let's look at the cart. We have that the net force acting on the cart is going to produce the acceleration of the cart. So, I'll subscript those with some little C's. And we note that the net force acting on the cart is going to be equal to this force of tension and this force due to gravity. These two forces cancel each other out, no need for those. So we've got ourselves a T hat plus some FG parallel sub C hat. And thus from this, we've got ourselves the T hat plus FG parallel sub C hat is equal to M sub C, A sub C hat. That force produces the acceleration of the mass, great. Well, we don't know what T hat is, right? So that's going to be a problem because we don't know what acceleration is either. So that's as well as a problem. So how are we going to figure that out? Well, we're going to have to look and say this is a coupled system. That's right. We've got to be able to make some correlation between these two and their motions because they're coupled together. They have to undergo the same magnitudes of accelerations, the same changes in velocity over the same time intervals, the same displacements over the same time intervals. They're coupled. So we look to the suspended mass. And we've got the net force acting on the suspended mass produces the acceleration of the suspended mass. And we've got that the net force acting on the suspended mass is what the sum of those two forces. We've got, again, a force of tension. And we've got the force due to gravity acting on the suspended mass. And like we had in this above case, we thus must have the T hat plus F sub G S hat is equal to M sub S A sub S hat. So one thing that we know is that the force of tension is equally transmitted. We're taking this string to be of negligible mass. And we're not really worried about that. Um, it's fairly negligible. So these two T hats, in terms of their magnitudes, are the same magnitudes. That's a good because we can solve both of these expressions for T. So should we just go ahead and do that? No, not yet. Let's not do that yet. Because what we want to do is produce some sort of sign correlation in terms of these vector quantities. So let's just go ahead and say for this mass, that up the incline is positive, and down the incline is negative. So, say that weighs plus, that weighs minus. And for this mass, let us say that this weighs plus, and that weighs minus. Why do I want to say down's plus and up's minus? This one's going to be moving up in the positive direction. This one's going to be moving down. Let's just call that the negative direction. S excuse me, the positive direction as well. So I'm going to say that down for this one is positive and up for this one is negative. So that the direction that they're moving is the positive direction. It makes things easier in the end. Really, it's arbitrary though. But in terms of those sign correlations now, we can go ahead and put that stuff in here. And what are we going to get? 
Well, this is going to be positive, this is going to be negative, and we've got these values here. This is going to be negative, this is going to be positive, and we've got those values up there. And we'll figure something out out about that momentarily. So let us just write this. We've got that T minus FG parallel sub C is equal to M sub C, A sub C. Again, this is going to be down, so, excuse me, up, ah, so that's going to be positive. It's still reading up the incline. And this one we can write as negative T plus F sub G sub S is equal to M sub S. A sub S. So now that we've done this and noted that the directions that they're moving are both in the same direction, sign wise, we have to have that A sub S is equal to A sub C because they're coupled together. And we've already said that those two T's are the same. So what can we do with that? Well, we're really interested in the cart. So let us just go ahead and substitute a sub c for a sub s. Doesn't matter, they undergo the same accelerations. So now we've got these two expressions. I'll write these once more. Use a different color, sure. We've got t minus fg parallel sub c is equal to m sub c a sub c for the cart and for the suspended mass we have minus t plus f sub g sub s is equal to m sub s a sub c. We change a sub s to a sub c there. And great, let's take those two equations, we'll call this number one, we'll call that number two, and see what we can do with them over here. So hopefully you can still see that. Oof. <coughs> All right, so what do we do with them? Let's solve both of those for t. Number one, we have that t will be equal to mc ac plus fg parallel sub c. g is equal to m sub c a sub c plus fg parallel sub c. Great. And we know what fg parallel sub c is, right? That's just going to be mg times the sine of theta sub i. So we've got that T is equal to MC AC plus MG sine of theta sub I, where this is M sub C, the mass of the cart. Great. So there's the first one. And then we've got number two. We've got ourselves. Well, I'm going to solve this out for T. I'll throw T onto the other side. And we've got ourselves that T is equal to F sub G sub S minus M sub S A sub C. And this is just going to be M sub S G, right? So we've got T is equal to M sub S G minus M sub S A sub C. So we've got this expression for T and that expression for T. T equals this and T equals that. So what do we have? This has to be equal to that, and that's going to allow us to ultimately figure out what the net force is, because we can figure out what the acceleration is. So let us do that. Put that up and try to do this. This is only going up so high. So let's just do it right here. These two, T is equal to T, gives us a race. We're going to get ourselves that m sub c a sub c plus m sub c g times the sine of theta sub i is equal to m sub s g minus m sub s a sub c. There we go. I'm going to solve this for a sub c. So let's get all the a sub c's on one side. I can put this over here and I'll have an m sub c a sub c plus m sub s a sub c 
and I'll throw that on the other side. So I'm doing a couple of little things right here. I can factor out the a sub c and have that as m sub c plus m sub s. Again, taking this, throwing it over there. And then we've got ourselves this left, m sub s, g. And then we've got this here, minus m sub c, g, times the sine of a theta sub i, which enables us now to solve for the acceleration of the car. a sub c is equal to m sub s, g, minus m sub c, g, times the sine of theta sub i, divided by the quantity of m sub c plus m sub s. Well, that's great. Now that we know the acceleration of the car, we know what the net force acting on the car is because the net force acting on the car is equal to the mass of the car times the acceleration of the car. And there's the acceleration right here. And we know that the net work done on the car is equal to the net force multiplied by the distance that the car moves under the action of that net force. So we've got ourselves the net work on the cart is equal to the net force on the cart multiplied by d, the distance again that the cart moves. So all said, we can write one nice little expression. We can put that up and pull this down a little bit. Pull this back down. In which we can write out what the net work done on the cart is in one succinct expression here. We've got, this should be m sub c, we've got m sub c times a sub c times d for the network on the cart. So we'll multiply this by m sub c, and we will get that the network done on the cart is going to be equal to the quantity of m sub s m sub c g minus m sub c squared g times the sine of theta sub i shadowed there so that's the m sub c gone through there that all divided by the quantity of m sub c plus m sub s so that's m sub c m sub c squared g sine theta that all multiplied by d as long as we have kilograms for the masses, that ends up not really mattering, but we want to use kilograms, and the distance in meters, we'll have the network on the carton joules. That's exactly what we want. So this is what we'll be utilizing for the theoretical expression of the network done on the carton. All right, so let's go ahead and do the lab now, shall we? You're on it. Good luck.